Hey everybody, it's your friend Moonhorse here. And before we start this episode, I want to explain something. I, I said this on Twitter, and it also got said on the Discord server, but I don't know how many of you actually follow my Twitter, or are also on the Discord server, so I'm going to explain why this episode may sound a little different than the one that comes after it, and the one before it. So, this is My Roommate the Legbeard, Part 4, by Lizcat, and... I, while looking through just a hair of this story, legitimately remember not only editing this episode, but recording it. I remember every single thing about it. And yet, when it came time to upload it, I went through my computer. It is fucking gone. All I can figure is I might have accidentally deleted it, thinking I was deleting part three, in order to open up space in my folders so I can put in more episodes that have finished. But I do actually remember every single thing about it, which is going to make me angry. Because I remember how I had all this stuff planned out, and now I don't remember any of the things that I said afterwards. But I wanted to explain why this might sound a little different. And I'm also really, really, like, angry with myself for that. Because literally, as soon as I realized it was gone, was not... 30 seconds after I realized I had done an entire, like, system clean. So, everything in the trash can, all the files that are just, you know, not good anymore have been deleted. It's gone forever. If it was in there, it's not here anymore. So, this is me re-recording that, and... <sighs> shit. I I'm seriously just mad at myself. I'm mad and embarrassed that I allowed that to happen. But let's read this story, because... This is actually a very good story. Hey guys. Hi, this cat. So this is part four of the story of A. At this point in the story, it takes place right after the October Walmart hookup. Uh, the great October Walmart hookup. This is not going to focus on legbeard bullshit. It's going to focus on her being a bitch more than anything. It's going to focus on the emotional toll this finally took on me along with a load of bullshit that decided to hit me all at once. This is the culmination of my breaking point. My depression, my anger, all of it. A's nest, I don't even know what to call it, had grown exponentially. I was failing half my classes because of her nightly bullshit. And obviously in college, no one really cares about that. I'm working my ass off to try and keep up, but you can only do so much on... You know, four hours of sleep a night. My GPA is failing. I was eating garbage food. I'm still taking the trash out, though. Hay had three bags built up at this point on her side. She knew the Domino's delivery schedule and was ordering in every night. By the way, we have meal plans. If you don't know what that means, it means we have a certain amount of punches, a.k.a. meals, that we have each week. I'm on the 19 meal a week plan, with $175 to spend at spots that don't take punches. This costs about $3,000 a semester. A had the exact same plan as me. She did not use hers. At all. I gave up on trying to convince her to clean her shit up. I just kept using my Swiffer and shoving all her shit back to her side. The room had become worse ever since she gave up going to classes. Yeah, she just, uh... Just stopped going so she could game with her friends and binge watch Netflix and sleep all day from about 10 till 7 p.m. She was sick 24 7 and was living off Domino's, Coke Zero, Mountain Dew, and NyQuil. Oh, that sounds healthy. She was still pulling her all night game sessions even though she was sick. I'm trying to take out as much of her trash as I can because I'm afraid we'll get bugs or, you know, worse. I'm somehow able to keep running as best I can while sick as well. Guess where that came from? I'm constantly cleaning our room. I never really was a neat person, but considering the shit that showed up in that pile from time to time, if you read part one, you know damn well what I mean. There was worse. Let's just leave that one to your imagination. I keep my side neat and tidy. I didn't want to risk any of that ending up in my stuff. That made it worse, though. She started moving into my side of the room. 
I found her makeup and brushes on my desk. Hairbrushes everywhere. Moldy food in my fridge. Ew. I had become a 23-year-old mother to a fucking 26-year-old infant. Having all this shit piling on me was killing me. But with Pyro there as one of my only friends, I was pulling through. She kept me going and made sure I got out a lot. She made sure I did eat. There was a spell when I just stopped eating, so I was so depressed from living in a fucking trash hole. Becky, our sweet mate, would come and talk to me and try to keep me sane. She tried to help me organize my room as A is sitting there on her system, screaming at her friends between coughs and cans of soda. Our RA kept telling A to clean her shit, and she would for a day, and then it would be back. But since this is the only bullshit I had to deal with, I can make do, right? Yeah, that's when I got hit with shit news. My grandmother died right after the Walmart incident. We did not have a great relationship, but I had known her for 23 years. 23 years, and she's just... gone. I only saw her a few times, and I felt really guilty that I hadn't seen her more. This also wasn't the first death I had that year. A close friend I babysat for for close to 10 plus years had, gotten, had been hit by a car and died six months earlier. So my emotions were all very raw. I'm still not over this, but I'm getting better. My father drove all the way down that Friday, picked me up, and drove me home. I did not tell A what was happening because she was out. She never checked her phone anyway, and it didn't matter at that point. We had the funeral, and I was driven back to school, studying for a midterm the entire ride home. When I got in, I looked pale as hell. My mother helped me bring my stuff into the room and went to stay at a hotel for the night. I went back to the hotel with her because I did not want to deal with A yet. The next morning, Mom dropped me off at my class, and she went home. I took the test, went through my daily routine, shuffled back to my room. When I got there, A was sat on her bed with yet another Domino's box, shoveling pizza into her mouth and watching Netflix. Where the hell did you go this weekend? I would say I couldn't bring anyone over because you're gone. You didn't ask. You can't just fucking take off. I slowly dropped my backpack on the floor, tears streaming down my face. I was at a funeral. My grandmother just died. A looked at me. I thought for once she was going to be a decent person. I was wrong. Ugh, why do you care? Old people die all the time. Stop whining about it. No one cares what happened to your family. What a fucking bitch. I... Oh, that kind of shit really pisses me off. <sighs> Wow. I just start sobbing. Can you keep it down? I can't hear. A told me this as so she proceeded to turn up the volume on her laptop. I had nowhere to go, so I just crawled under my bed covers after kicking off my shoes and cried. It wasn't just what she said. It was everything. All the trash, the smell, the dirty clothes, the lack of sleep, the death, struggling all semester, trying to deal with her. It all just hit at once. At some point, I had fallen asleep, and I woke up to Becky shaking me. She'd known what happened. She'd been looking for me while I was away and texted me asking where I was, so I told her what happened. A's voice piped up. Don't call her. She's an adult now. She needs to start acting like it. Becky ignored her and grabbed my jacket and my bag and took me out of the room and downstairs for dinner. I wasn't really hungry, but she insisted I had to eat something. Becky ended up going home the following week to visit family, and I got my midterm back. I failed. No surprise there. I started drinking heavily that week. I just couldn't deal with my usual bullshit from A sober, and it just felt better. I'm okay now. I, I don't drink so much anymore. So before anyone worries, I just want to say that I am much better now, and I have my depression mostly under control. So I'm chilling in my bed, and A's in hers, and Becky knocks on the door, which I had opened to air out the damn Domino's trash bin. That's basically what this room had turned into. She came in and asked how I was doing, and I told her, I'm alright, and that's all I was at this point. Becky pulled out a box and held it out. These are from home. I blinked and opened it up. The box is filled with so many cookies, from lemon cookies to chocolate chip. Well, what's this for, I asked. I visited family this week, and I told everybody what was happening with you, and your grandma, and how bad you were handling it, and... 
Oh, my grandmother made you these. She said you needed a little love. She looked right at A, who had sat up to look, and made eye contact with A. And they're only for you, Liz Cat. You and you only. And she gave me a hug and went to unpack. I sat there, sitting nestled in my pillows a bit, and started munching on a couple of these cookies. Hey, can I have some? A said. I went to offer the box to her, then stopped. Then I pulled him back. I put one in my mouth and said, I think we can see you don't need any. Fuck off, eh? And that's still not the end. This is merely the beginning of me putting my foot down. A bit too late, but I was fucking done. Yeah, the last comment there was mean, but at this point, all the shit that she had put me through, I'm done. This is where I start taking my life and my room back from this bitch. There's going to be at least two more parts of this story, and I'll get them out as soon as I can, guys. Thanks again, Moonhorse, for making this Reddit and for reading these. Well, you're very welcome. I love hearing everyone's stories and hearing my own be read. Well, of course. Let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm glancing down at the comments, and um, everybody said basically what I was about to say. is You do not have to put up with her. So, honestly, uh, I understand where a lot of this is going. Um, obviously, I read the next part since, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything. But, yeah, uh, I kind of went through the same thing with people being really unsupportive after I... Uh, lost my grandmother and my stepfather. And they were just like almost right next to each other. Um, I had known these people all my life and now they're gone. And it just didn't feel real. Um, and at the time, uh, I had a bunch of friends, quote unquote friends, on different uh, platforms and, and stuff who... You know, they, you think of them as friends because you talk to them every day. But what I quickly learned is just because you talk to someone every day doesn't mean that they actually have your you know, best interest in mind. And they didn't. Uh, when I was at my lowest, they basically just pushed me away. And when I got upset for being ousted, for being, you know, legitimately upset, a few of them told me that I should just kill myself. And that made my depression worse, but um, it also kind of woke up parts of me. Um, because anyone who's gone through a major loss or like a major upheaval like that knows that there are certain things, there are certain patterns to what happens. Uh, I went through a major depression for almost a year where I honestly became a bit of an alcoholic um i'm much better now i'm actually much much better now but the thing that fixed all that as much as you know there'll be people maybe even in the comments uh who will tell me that this is wrong and you're probably right it probably is wrong but it fixed this so i'm not going to argue with it uh and i'm not gonna you know try to reprimand myself for it um is not just finding a creative outlet like this, where I can talk to you guys and start doing things. It's phase two of this whole grieving process. And I'm sure Liz Cat knows what I'm talking about, because there comes a point where the sadness is just too much. We're too broken. And that, that emotion, it's like that, that part of your brain just shorts out. It just shuts down entirely. It's like, you can't be sad anymore. So, your brain is now confused. And it's like, well, but I am sad. And it's like, well, you can't be sad anymore. You broke that part. Like, okay, well, then what do I feel? Hate. I felt so much hate. So much rage. Like, you would not believe. I was pissed about everything. I was pissed at... But not at people. I wasn't mad at, like... I wasn't attacking strangers. I wasn't screaming at family members. I was looking at my life. At where I was. After all this. And I was mad at myself. And I was mad at my situation. 
Now, granted, in, in Liz Cat's case, she has every reason to be mad at A, and that's totally fucking understandable. But for me, I didn't have anyone to blame. Um, I can only give you my personal experience, but from my experience, it was anger that transformed everything. I was tired of this shit. I was, I was tired of living like shit. I, I was tired of literally sleeping on a bed that had a fucking pumpkin-sized hole in the box spring because it was broken and I was too poor to fix it. I, I had to shove pillows in it, and I threw my back out at least three times a year because of it. Uh, I was angry that my computer desk was like a repurposed TV tray in the side of a fucking bureau because I had nothing else. Uh, I was pissed that all my computers kept breaking because I couldn't afford to do any kind of maintenance. I was mad, mad living the places I was where everything was fucking broken and nobody would listen to me. And every time I tried to fix something, it was like talking to a fucking wall. Everybody just thought I was stupid and that nothing I said mattered. Even when I was upset, I wasn't worth talking to. Even when it was really fucking obvious that I was attempting to destroy myself, I wasn't worth talking to. And at that point, I decided you don't get to dictate the fucking conversation anymore. No one gets to tell me how I feel. I'll tell you how I fucking feel. And if you don't like it, fuck off. You don't belong around here if you're going to fucking ignore me when I need you. You're not really my friend. And that's how I learned who my real friends were. That anger propelled me into being more assertive and and just, I guess, dominant in general. Like, I was just like, I don't need this fucking shit. I'm an adult and I don't have to fucking deal with you. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. You know, like, I'm doing the things I enjoy. For the first time in my life, I started this shit with this channel and talking to people and reading stories and doing stuff. And these motherfuckers are telling me, oh, you're never going to amount to anything. You should just give up. It's stupid. It's like, and do what? And do what? Just hang around like the rest of you fucking ass clowns? Do shit I hate all day? Be miserable 24-7? You know what? I'd rather be homeless and happy than rich and fucking miserable like you. Because I already realized that you don't get a second fucking chance, pal. There ain't no do-overs. If you're going to do it, do it while it fucking matters. And that's why I'm so hardcore with the shit I do. Because this matters. You guys matter. I actually met a fucking community I like. And if you learned anything from your friend Moonhorse, it's that you don't need anyone's permission to feel better about yourself. You don't need anyone's permission to make things better for you. Guys... In another episode, uh, which I'm sure I will have posted and some other stuff, I'm going to answer this because I answered this in a uh, thing, in a Discord. Um, I got a couple comments from you guys asking if, you know, oh, because of your character and all, Moonhorse, are you a furry? I was. I was. And that community fucking let me down. I turned into abject, absolute trash, and I couldn't deal with it anymore. So I left. I found other communities. And they turned into trash too. And I didn't want to be a part of that. So I left. So. To compare my social life to my working life. Every job I ever had was absolute shit. Until I made my own. Doing this. And then I liked this. And I was happy with this. Yeah, it's not the greatest thing. But it makes me happy. And that's what matters. And as a side set of this, a community sprung up. You guys sprung up. Every community I joined turned into shit. So I fucking made my own. Because fuck rules. So Liz Cat, just remember you don't ever have to put up with people like A. Just because they act like they're in charge. Or they're trashy nonsense fills everything it's not just her space and she has no fucking right to talk to you like that 
I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. This one ran a little long. I got a little mad there at the end. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I get a little heated. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're just going to end this video. This was, this was kind of a sad one. Uh, things got weird. So, hopefully the next couple of videos will be more, you know, back to form of ha, -ha funny. But, remember, it's okay to feel bad sometimes. It's okay to feel angry sometimes. So many times we're told that you're not supposed to be sad or you're not supposed to be angry. No, fuck that. It's how you feel. You have every right to feel that. And no one can take that away from you. Think about that. Because it means something. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye.